So, Chuck, a couple of years ago, we did an explainer on meteor showers. Okay, yes. All right. And I thought I'd add a couple of things to it. It was only days ago where a very bright fireball mm -hmm. came across the New York skyline. Yes. Yes, and uh, people were looking, and they were like, this is it. <laughs> it's over. This is the opening of the movie. <laughs> so what is a fireball? It's simply a bigger meteor. Uh -huh. right, most meteors are the size of a pea. So you have an asteroid, okay. all right? There's a rock moving around the sun. Right. Some of their orbits cross the orbit of the Earth. And asteroids we think of as big objects, but they're smaller bits of rock out there. Right. All right. As it moves through Earth's atmosphere and is rendered a glow, we call it a meteor. Okay. See that meteor? Look at that. It's synonymous with shooting star right. or falling star. Okay. Okay. The same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Right. Okay. Not in Hollywood. If it is big enough to survive this encounter with Earth's atmosphere, okay. then a piece will land on the ground. Okay. You yeah. go pick up that piece, Ooh. it's no longer a meteor. It's a meteorite. Meteorite. That's it. Mm. So we have two different words for the same object. For the same thing. Just simply if it's visible if it's, in the air. If it's in flight, it's not a meteorite. Did you just make that? I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And depending on what the structural integrity of the rock is, uh -huh. will determine how big it has to be in order to survive the trip. Okay. By the way, it takes <clears throat> seconds to come through the air. All right, the, the full yeah. width of the atmosphere. It's just a matter of seconds. You could get a golf ball-sized meteor through the atmosphere and land on the ground. Ooh. Okay? That's not very big. No, it's not very big. It's not very big. In fact, oh, I got one right here near my chair. Of course. <laughs> Funny how that worked out. <laughs> so uh, this is an iron meteorite, and this is a tiny piece of a much larger meteor that came through the air slammed into Earth and actually left a crater behind. So, here you go. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so why don't you hold on to that. Oh, ooh. <laughs> oh my, oh. Yo, this is a workout right here. <laughs> this is serious. This so, thing weighs about... A billion pounds. No, so, <laughs> so imagine... Yeah, this is about... Imagine this meteorite, which is an iron, it's a fragment of a much larger meteor. meteor. And imagine that just falling from the ceiling, hitting your head. I can't imagine this. Let me tell you something. I wouldn't drop this from right here onto my lap. From a foot above from your a foot lap, above right? My, I wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do it. This, okay. This will. I mean. Okay. So this was born five billion, four and a half billion years ago. Wow. It's moved through space. Wow. It collided with Earth about fifty thousand years ago. Wow. And, and based only... on you holding it in your midsection, you're now sterile. Like, the, are you done having kids? Thank God. <laughs> Thank you, meteorite. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm just kidding. Oh my. So, God. yeah. So that's an iron meteorite, and this this sh uh, should attract a magnet. I found a magnet in my office. Mm -hmm. I got a little bit of everything. So let's see. Yeah. Look at that. So there you go. Well, of course that would stick because it's iron. Iron. Yeah. But yeah. there are many rocky meteorites are also highly magnetic. Wow. All right. So anyhow, these things are falling from the sky. This one was big enough to make a crater. You didn't want to be around when that happened. No, you don't. So uh, falling just from the ceiling, it would crush your skull. Without a so doubt. So now imagine this thing the size of the sphere of the Hayden Planetarium. No. Moving at 10 miles per second through the atmosphere. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. So it made a crater almost a mile in diameter. Oh. Deep enough to sink a 62-story building. Wow. That crater is Meteor Crater in Arizona. I thought there was one in Mexico that was like that. No, no, no. You might be confusing that with the one that took out the dinosaurs. The Yucatan. But that crater is buried under the, the, the gulf. Oh, okay. It was discovered by oil prospecting of, oil companies. Of course. <laughs> they found a little ridge line. Right. And let's follow this around. It made a whole big circle. Circle. Yeah. yeah. It, which is, and they dated it 65 million years ago. It, that's not the smoke. That's the gun. Right. The smoking gun <laughs> the smoking of gun. the death of the dinosaurs. Anyhow, this stuff is falling from the sky. Most of it are tiny little bits and pieces right. the size of peas. If it's about the size of a golf ball or a little larger, it'll make it to the ground. So 
What that means is when you saw this fireball, mm -hmm. that's not much bigger than a golf ball. That's evidence of how much energy is getting dissipated into the atmosphere. Yeah, It's going 10 miles a second and it's slowing down rapidly moving through the air. It's hard to think of air as something that'll slow you down. Right. But if you're going 10 miles a second, it's gonna slow you down good. Yeah, without a doubt, okay? yeah. And you can try this exercise, when, next time you're driving your car, roll down, to, or have you open windows these days, lower the window, stick your hand out. You're going 60 miles an hour down the street, stick your hand out. It, it is energy to keep your wrist rigid against the moving air. Oh, yeah. The air is doing stuff to your hands. Exactly. That's 60 miles an hour, not 10 miles per second. Yeah, that's 60 okay? miles. Okay, 10 miles per second, it'll rip your hand off and it'll fly into yeah, the air. Yeah, So, if you're going that fast and hit Earth's atmosphere, it's like you're hitting a brick wall. Why is this breeze peeling off my skin? <laughs> <laughs> I do not. <laughs> Why do I look like I'm looking into the Ark of the Covenant? <laughs> You can ask how many of these little particles are there? So Earth plows through several hundred tons of meteors a day. Uh, most of it is in these small particles, some are larger, and occasionally you get something big enough so that the streak is longer in the sky, mm -hmm. it's much brighter in the sky, mm -hmm. brighter than even the planet Venus, for example. We have some very loose definitions of what the brightness level should be before it gets a new category. Uh, but we call these collectively bolides. Bolides. When you see a bolide, you can't point it out to other people. It happens that quickly? It doesn't last that long. Wow. It lasts, you know, a couple of seconds. You look at it, and you say, hey, Joe, Mary, turn and look at this. And it's gone. And they, so, huh. so, so. Meteor, Another bolide, huh? <laughs> so meteors are very personal experiences. Right, yeah. So when you're meteor hunting, you want to go out in an open field and just go as wide, wide as you can. As wide as you can. And then you catch them in your peripheral vision. So I've been with groups and say, oh, look over here. Right. And then nobody, nobody else sees it. Nobody sees it. Too late. It. So it's hard for me to say it, but I have to. I say, shut the right. up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keep it to yourself. Keep, keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. <laughs> right. So yeah. the solar system has a little, little, little leftovers. Leftovers just hanging. Yes. And we're rotating into these leftovers. We're we're, we're rotating, but we're revolving around the sun right. in our orbit, plowing, plowing through, through it. it. Yes. Why is it then that these things don't take out our satellites and the crazy amount of junk that we have in our front yard? They do. Ooh, get out! For example, the Hubble telescope right. has what we call a safe mode. Yeah. All right, because while there are meteors every night, mm -hmm. several times a year, there are swarms of meteors, and we call those meteor showers. You get a meteor shower from a part of Earth's orbit where a comet had been, and it had left behind all this debris that continues to orbit the sun. Because mm. a comet is a dirty ice ball. The ice evaporates. What happens to the dirt? It stays, it stays in the orbit. There. Gotcha. So that's why meteor showers occur at the same time every year. Mm. Probably the most famous of these is the Perseid meteor showers, which takes place in the second week of August, mm. August 10th, 11th, 12th. It's a wide meteor shower. So you can see it over several days. That's how long it takes Earth to plow through all of the, the debris. So when we are moving through the debris leftovers from a comet, when we're experiencing a meteor shower, it is wise to put your satellite in safe mode. So the Hubble telescope turns away from the direction of motion in Earth's orbit, closes the hatch to protect the mirror. Gotcha. Doesn't mean you won't still get hit. Right. But maybe you'll get hit on something that wasn't well, as costly get, as the mirror. You'll get paddled. <laughs> Okay, so it's totally a risk. Wow. And, uh, and the larger is our technosphere, the more of Earth's coverage. You, you've seen Elon launching thousands, thousands of satellites, yeah. all right? Somebody's gonna get, gonna get taken out. Wow, look at that. Yeah. Watch out, Elon. Yep, the solar system is coming to get you. <laughs> just cause, <laughs> just cause you, it's the size of a pea, if it's going 11 miles a second, it's going to do some damage. Yeah, that's called a bullet. Yeah, yeah. it's a BB gun that'll kill you. <laughs> right. <Yeah. Okay. laughs> All right. So uh, now one last interesting fact, I think, about this. Right. right. Okay. So Earth is plowing into the meteors, right, mm -hmm. to create the meteor shower. 
That means the back side of Earth is not getting the brunt of it, only the front side. Half of that is darkness and the other half is light. Every part of that side of the Earth is equally susceptible to meteor showers. The problem is, after the sun rises, you're not gonna see them. Yeah. So the best time to view meteors is between midnight and morning dawn. Oh. Because that's the dark side of the Earth that's on the leading edge of Earth's movement around the sun. Oh. That's why meteor showers, you can go out at 10 p.m., you might catch one or two, but the rate rapidly goes up after midnight. After midnight. Oh, so yeah. it's a late night party. That's it's a, it's a late night party. Yeah. And the reason why the Perseids are the most famous is it happens in the summertime. Right. You go just go out on lawn chairs, you chilling all night. Yeah. Now in the summertime we're on daylight savings, so midnight is really 1 a.m. on your clock. Right. Okay. The universe doesn't care about daylight <laughs> yeah, savings. Yeah, time. exactly. So you, so our mid so you have to wait till after 1 a.m. and that's when the rate rapidly increases. Not only for any random day, but especially for the meteor showers. Sounds like a cool rave. All right, that's just some extra info about that's meteor showers. Awesome. Yeah, and bolide, you know, you'll see a few of those in your lifetime. Uh, I, I have yet to. Yeah, because you ain't looking up. How about if I look at the meteor on my phone? Then you'll be in violation of the major tenet of our brand, which is look up. As always, where are you going? Now? What, what? Oh, he's looking up on the phone. <laughs> Check. You have to want to look up. I found a loophole. Mm, he did find a loophole in not keep looking up. <laughs> Chuck. Anyhow, we gotta get out of here. Yeah. Uh, Chuck, thanks for being here. Always a pleasure. All right. Until next time. Keep looking. Up.